internet hi bosun here uh, i'm going to be quickly revisiting the uh, migo pad t02 this week last week if you're watching that one i had a few little issues and things and i've had a little play with it now and i can just give you a little bit of better idea of an overview of what i found and how i'm getting on with it so far now one of the big issues i had last week was the uh the framing on that was all just heading outside of the the frame of the tv now what i fear found out since is most tvs coming through their hdmi will have something called overscan now what this is is when uh, broadcasts come in uh it deliberately actually stretches it slightly um because sometimes broadcast hd and other things have some minor artifacting around the edges so by just squeezing that outside of the uh, normal frame size if there is any of that artifacting going around little scan bits and stuff you as a viewer don't see it so the tvs have put that in there so you're not complaining your telly's giving a lot of nonsense around the edges when it's nothing to do with the television manufacturer it's actually to do with uh, the broadcast quality so when i figured that out i then went in and there is an option on here rather than the 16 by 9 which I wanted for the 1920 by 1080 um, went to fit screen and it brought it in what have you but I still wasn't happy about the quality of the image I was having like a graying effect around uh, some of the text now so if it was like on a white uh, gray background and uh, there was uh, text it would have like a white halo or if it was like white background thing you have a little bit of a gray halo around the text now this is purely because where it's the telev is kind of deliberately stretching the image it's um obviously distorting the pixels ever so slightly and then when, even when you tell it to fit it's squishing the distorted image so it was still given that now i know i use my main pc through this tv and it's fine so i thought hmm looked into it further my PC that I've been running for now has been going through the DVI, the HDMI slash DVI port. Now this port on the telly is different because it does not do overscan. There is no way that I have found and I've looked online to disable overscan on other HDMI ports. My HDMI 1 slash DVI port, which if I bring this up here, you can see it there, HDMI 1 DVI PC port, that one there is the only one that is set up to show the 1920 by 1080 in its native form. Once I did that, bang, suddenly it was nice, it was clear, it was sharp, it was how I expected and wanted it to be. The only drawback is obviously I want to run my main PC through that and I had spare HDMI ports, so I'm going to have to invest in an HDMI splitter, uh, well, switcher, sorry. So, that is something I might have to invest in. Also, as you were aware last week, uh, I had issues with the HDMI port on the side here blocking the USB ports. So what I have done is, if you switch this view here, you will see I now have this on the top here and it is running through an HDMI extension cable. This then gives me the ability to bring it here where I can get to it easier and also it, it lets it get a little bit more air i've also on here just to help it out i have just at the moment blue tacked onto the bottom uh, a usb stick just to help raise it up off of the desk now as you'll just see here what's just happened by moving that it's gone off either that or i've just lost the signal one sec let's just have to switch it off first the little red light is on still but Oh, there we go. It's now brought it back up. No, no, I don't want you to shut me down. And now I've shut it down. But one of the things I did have an issue with as well on this is when I told it to boot shut down, it would often then shut down after a second or two, reboot. Now, the fact that I actually want it to reboot now, it probably isn't going to. The little red light is on. Oh actually there it is it is actually coming back on well at least you can now get a good idea of boot time so it's actually relatively quick and it is now back to where i was so yes that is one of the things i had an issue with that when i was uh, actually telling it let's see if it will do it now or not 
telling it to actually shut down it would shut down go off you think oh that's cool shut down but then after about four or five seconds it would just then kick back in and reboot I don't know if it's going to do it let's have a little look and there we go so it might have been a bit quiet there and a bit boring for a second but I wanted to leave it running the video running so you could just see that is happening and I don't know why that's happening so let me log in again okay so we're back in so I have found that's temperamental when moving with now whether or not it's the power cable I'm using whether it's the HDMI extension cable I'm using whether it's the unit itself I don't really know at the moment but anyway that's been that little situation there now moving on from the kind of problems I've had one of the little nice successes I've had is uh, I did manage to get find up um, one of my old uh, USB CD drives and as I talked about the other week uh, this here the uh, Star Trek Voyager Elite Force game I thought ah I'll give that a little uh, a little go because looking at the specs it was talking about you know obviously this is talking about Windows 95 98 2000 and 3D hardware accelerated with full OpenGL support required and seeing it's like Pentium 2233 so you can get an idea of the era of this game and um, what have you 64 meg of RAM my god how would we cope with that now I don't know anyway so I installed that on here and ta -da. let's get past all the uh, turn this down a bit so you're not deafened by it if I just load again where I was halfway through now I'm running this on what was it I'm like 15 20 something by 1024 I can't remember the resolution from that era right off the top of my head like I do 1920 by 1 uh, 1080 and as we can see here it runs relatively well there is uh, uh, this resolution occasionally a little bit of a stutter but generally it's uh, quite all right so let's see I haven't got any board there ah oh, there we go I just got to shoot that boom boom so now I rush back through here as you can see it's playing quite nicely not even much in the way of issues let's kill a few Borg as you do I didn't say I was any good at first person shooters I enjoy playing them no good at them but there you can go you can see a relatively decent uh, graphical quality for the you know for that era especially back then that was brilliant quality uh, plays quite happily generally quite smoothly like a lot of these games you'll probably have to tweak with the settings to turn a few things on and off and resolutions and what have you to uh, get the best experience for you for depending on which particular game you're using this is just one of the very old games I've got but it's probably one of the more graphically challenging ones of the old games I've got and uh, if we have a little look in here I can go to the settings let's see what the video settings what was it 1280 by 1024 that was 1280 by 1024 with most of the things on high and what have you there so that give you a little idea of how this copes with things like old PC games I don't know how modern a PC game I could get to I know this was I think uh, powered off of which engine was it the uh, Quake 3 engine this is powered off of so if you've got any Quake 3 engine games then at the moment I don't see why they wouldn't play but I'm not going to guarantee that try it at your own risk uh, I still need to find a non-virus field no CD hack for this just so I don't have to keep hooking up the CD every time uh, 
but that's that. Okay, I know some of you are worried about where the 3D printed videos have gone. Don't worry, I see them being a very stable part of my channel. They will be back, so please stay subscribed. They will be back. As some of you are aware from previous videos and from social media, etc., um, I've had to have a lot of work. Well, we've had a lot of work done on the garage, which is basically knocking it down and building a new one. The old one was asbestos, 50 odd years old, and it was leaking and other things, and it just wasn't worth spending the money anymore to keep trying to patch it up or do anything, so it had to go. Uh, unfortunately, it did mean losing power for some time. So the old one's come down, we now have the new one up. Uh, I've been painting the floor, doing work in there on that. Uh, we've still got some work to do on the garage before we can start reusing it again as the garage. And the Sparky still is several days away from coming back to start wiring things back in for us. So I will be still, I still can't do much in the way of 3D printed videos at the moment. And even once the power is back in and up and running, uh, we have to get the garage back straight. And then I do actually really, really, really need to clear out that workshop because it's hard work moving in there. I want to clear it out so I can make a lot more space to make filming in there easier and better so I can do better angles and things like that hopefully in the future and be able to give you better videos in the future. So I'm going to be revamping my workshop a little bit with filming in mind this time. It does mean years of hoarding of things that will be useful one day is gonna to have to come to an end unless I can see a very, very close use for it sometime in the near future. I'm just going to have to let it slide. Uh, and my, that's going to be hard because I'm a hoarder. That's going to be hard. So as I said, um, once the power's back up and I've sorted the workshops out, then the 3D printer videos will recommence. Never fear. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, do the usual like and subscribe and uh, feel free to hit me up with any comments below. Any more questions about that? Also, uh, if you saw last week's one, you already know to go out and check Lon Simon's channel. He done a great video on the TO2 and the TO1 and the Intel Compute Stick. Uh, here he is here. Go over and watch the TO2 video of his. Uh, down here, pop, will be my TO1 video, sorry, TO2 video from last week. So go and pop that if you've not seen that one yet. If you go go along, I'd say give him a subscribe. He's a great guy great content he does some really great reviews he's got great techniques for doing it all uh, great multi-camera action angles very 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 knowledgeable go check out his channel check out his video you'll love all, you'll love all of his content i'm sure uh, you can also catch me on twitter at hi and i will see you again next week bye <laughs>